no more dealers. Ford's CEO has had enough and huge Maverick news. Well, that's the thumbnail of what I'm surprised is a huge YouTube video and millions of people have seen this thumbnail and millions of people are gonna assume that there's no more dealers or that there won't be any more dealers at Ford. I'm gonna explain what's really going on. I'm gonna talk a bit about what goes on in that video, a really, really well edited video by Velocity. Uh, however, the full story is not there. I wanna dive into the full story because I've actually been covering this now for 10 months. Started talking about this 10 months ago, really talked about it about roughly five months ago, back in February. So let's really talk about all Ford solutions to deal with the absolute insanity of huge dealer markups. And do keep in mind, I always put out a balanced story. So this is not all dealers. This is definitely a problem with some dealers. And Ford isn't just sitting back doing absolutely nothing about it. And that's just not the case. So I've got actually eight things that they're doing about it. And at the end, I actually will end with huge Maverick news. So let's just put the pedal to the metal, jump right in and get to talking about this. So I'm doing a whole video on this because, well, the, the thumbnail really says no more dealers. And it says Ford CEO had enough huge Ford Maverick news. Well, the problem is, is that it's only in the last 10% of the video that they talk about one of the solutions. So I'm going to be talking about eight solutions, but they only talk about one of the solutions that Ford is working on in regards to dealing with markup. And it's only in that last 10% of the video, which most people do not get to, that they actually talk about, you know, Ford not having any intentions of getting rid of dealers, but changing those dealers. So lots of change coming to Ford, lots of change coming to Ford. So I'll have eight things that they're, eight things, sorry, that they're covering that Ford's doing to really stop this insane dealer markup. And the market might help correct some of that as well because the used market is starting to, well, it was a huge bubble and now that bubble is slowly leaking out. We'll talk about that in a different video where we really go into depth. And if you like content like this, really insider news, do like and subscribe to Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. It does help feed and dress that poodle. So let's get right into it. What's been going on? First of all, let's start with what's been going on. I feel like I need to cover this because usually 10 to 20 times more people will see a thumbnail than actually click on it. So the video is going to end up with a million views. That means maybe up to 20 million people will have read a thumbnail that says no dealers. Do not wait to buy a Ford based on the idea of, well, I'm going to get a Ford when they get rid of those pesky dealers. That's true. There are some dealers that are pesky and work, Ford is working really hard to correct them because right now there are definite dealers, you know, inside EVs found that some dealers, Ford dealers are marking up the Mach-E, a market adjustment fee, dealer fee, whatever they want to call it, upwards of $15,000. On the Lightning, upwards of $50,000. And on the Bronco, a story that I've been covering now for over a year, markup has existed and it's been anywhere from nothing, MSRP, all the way to $25,000 more on the vehicle you actually ordered. And in some cases, uh, there's been a few stories of pe people being told, well, no, your Bronco never showed up. Why? Because they sold it to someone else for 20,000 of markup. And then they offer you another Bronco they have in inventory, probably someone else's stolen Bronco, and they offer that to you for 20,000 over. So that was a story that was on Bronco 6G recently, and that is horrific. And Jim Farley is working hard on this, and it's not just last minute ditch effort. So for those of you that say, because of all this, I will never buy a Ford again. And I've got that comment recently. It was a comment saying, I've only ever bought new Fords my entire life, and now I'm done with Ford. So. I'd like to mention that Ford has been working to resolve this now for, oh, close to a year. Uh, things started to get into motion in close to a year. So in reality, Jim Farley uh, did actually mention that dealerships would play a pivotal role in offering extra services uh, that Tesla and some others like Rivian do not offer. So Jim Farley wants there to be a full, you know, a full service, not just over the internet. And it also seems apparent from what he's been saying that, you know, dealerships play a pivotal role, that they can make the experience a lot better. Obviously, some dealers have been making the experience a whole lot worse. And I'd like you to comment in the comment section, 
your recent dealership experience, whether with Ford or not, say the manufacturer and say, you know, what was the experience like? Were there dealer fees? Did you pay over MSRP? Um, however, Jim Farley did mention that we're going to be moving towards non-negotiated prices and he wants, in his words, transparent and regulated pricing. So let's dive into that because there are solutions that have been going all the way back to last summer. Canada was a bit of a, a test, uh, test environment for getting pricing correct. So we're gonna be talking about that, about name match. We'll be talking about, you know, what is COVP and how important it is that you have it with your order. So the main issues, MSRP, some dealers going way over MSRP. Theft, just saying your Bronco never showed up because, well, they sell it to someone else. And also the real news in all this, because that's all old news, the real news in all this is Ford's recent working to get rid of wholesalers. And I'll tell you what a wholesaler is and what they're ex ex doing exactly. But first of all, let's start off. Uh, you know, I started off with making sure that you don't have to watch the very last 10% of the video, which most people do not do. I want the correct information to be out there. And I also want the most important information to be out there. So let's start with the most important information, COVP. What is it? Well, that's customer order verification process. Ford tested this out in a way, they started talking about last summer in Canada saying you're going to have to name match. And if you lose too many customers, whatever the reason may be, Ford knowing that some dealers would try to mark up and that, you know, there could be shenanigans once the vehicle actually shows up. They said if you lose more than a, a and it was a relatively low percentage that was talked about, but they said there will be consequences. So dealers in Canada were warned about this all the way as early as about last August or September. So give or take a year to 11 months ago. So now in the States, there is a lot of markup much sooner than in Canada, and they put into place a system called COVP. So this customer order, order verification process is required for Ford, really we could say, to take your order seriously because it's proof that you're a real client because you need to sign an offer so your signature needs to also match your driver's license signature your driver's license address needs to also match the offer address so on the signed offer the address needs to show up and they also need to prove that you've given a deposit so with all that in in play they put that into a computing system and Ford can see that you're a real client so if your dealership isn't asking you to do all that problem is is you're going to go into a batch of orders that are going to be treated very similar to inventory and these days you know I, I still don't understand why some people are still trying to shop around for you know a hybrid maverick in stock or worse a ford lightning in stock you're just going to burn out the staff at dealerships and you're going to be wondering why they seem you know Frustrated when you ask about uh, a lightning in inventory. Well, that's because there just won't be any S really hot models. Ford isn't going to waste their time building dealer inventory so that the dealership may or may not then increase the price on the vehicle. They're focusing on our orders like Ma Marie and I's Ford Maverick hybrid ordered. You know, the official date in the system is July 30th when they accepted our hybrid Lux order. And they're focusing on those. If they had to build 50% towards dealer inventory, well, what would happen? It would take twice as long to get a vehicle. So on certain models, on certain models, there is essentially no inventory. And if the dealer does get a canceled customer order in inventory, well, the fact that it could cost them the loss of a month's worth of vehicles, well, they probably are now almost incentive. It's almost to their advantage. They almost there, there's incentives to ask for more because that lost client could actually cost them a lot. But actually dealerships in advance are gonna be making sure that clients who order are absolutely serious about getting it. They're not just ordering you know, four different hybrids from different brands and seeing which one will come in first. And on that note, hybrids at other brands such as Kia, Toyota, Hyundai, there are, in a lot of cases, most of their hybrid models and electric models are taking well over a year and a half to get their hands on. So this isn't a Ford only issue, but Ford is working on, now I've got a few more of these to cover, 
there's a few more things that Ford really is doing to correct all of this. Now, number two, the second thing Ford really is doing is name match. So what name match is, is that a client has to order. It's part of the whole COVP process, but before in Canada, for example, we didn't have COVP, we just had name match. So it was just basically that the driver's license matches with the vehicle that comes in. But now with COVP, customer order verification process, They've added, they did this in the States first and they're now doing it in Canada. They've added also the requirement to have a signed offer and you should ask for a copy of that uh, because that's your protection and really get them to put it in writing that they will sell at that price. And if it's for a sold out unit, but they're doing a pre-sale, get them to sign that they will sell at the internet deal, the internet price, the interest rate and whatever price the, the internet's setting up as MSRP for the vehicle. But now with name match, there's consequences. So first of all, if the dealership doesn't do COVP, good luck getting your vehicle. Uh, if you haven't given over your driver's license, put down the deposit and signed an offer, you're likely not getting your vehicle because it will be treated as just a potent, basically inventory because it's potentially a cheated or invented customer. Ford doesn't want to be giving out uh, these whatsoever. Um, so what are they doing? They're going with name match and if a dealership loses more than 20% of the people they ordered for, they will lose a month's worth of allotments of all their vehicles. Second time, three months. Now, the journal, they did mention that this would be actually after the third time that the dealership would just cease to exist. That's not the case. The dealership will not have a year's worth of new vehicles. It can potentially continue, continue to exist if it's part of a corporation that owns, let's say, 50 or more dealerships. But for a lot of dealerships, yes, this would put them out of business. Now, the news, something that Ford is absolutely doing here is Ford is refusing to sell to wholesalers. This is only news in the sense that it's become public knowledge, but this has been the case for actually uh, at least a few, several years. So basically Ford doesn't want a dealership to then, you know, whether they make a deal or not, but sell to a business or an individual that's going to be taking up a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of these individuals and businesses could take up a big portion of the actual orders, potential vehicles built and then just marking them up. So buying them and instantly marking them up. So in case you're wondering, thinking, you know, what is this really going to resolve? Well, this definitely takes away part of the production, which would have gone to businesses that solely exist to buy up what could have been our vehicles and then reselling them to us for 20, 30, 40, $50,000 over their original intended price. Because Ford, Ford, once they're in the, those people's hands, they don't have a whole lot that they can do. So they want to make sure the dealership doesn't sell to these people. Now the consequence, one for one. So if a dealership sells to someone who's on you know, the wholesale or resellers list, they'll lose one unit. The second time, they could actually lose all their lightnings for the year or all their mock es for the year. So very, very serious to not do that. You might be wondering, well, what are others doing? Well, for example, GM is canceling warranties and on their most popular models, such as the Corvette and on the Hummer EV, what they're doing is they're canceling all warranties except for the warranty on the battery. So that's what's going on at GM. Ford is just straight up telling dealerships, look, you pull that kind of nastiness, and it's, it's nasty in the sense that they do take up production and you, know, you get enough of these, let's say 30% of production is towards resellers. Well, that means the market would just be filled with really the only attainable vehicles would be filled with these vehicles that are way over MSRP. So that cannot be done. And that public news is news in the sense that it just became public. Now, <clears throat> so that was actually two and three. Now let's move on to another thing Ford is doing and that's direct sales. Ford is moving towards a direct sale process and this doesn't mean that there'll be no more dealerships. Actually, the CEO, Jim Farley, sees it as, I, I call it actually, personally, I call it a hybrid system. It's somewhere between Rivian and Tesla's direct sales where you know in their galleries, you can't talk price. You just look at the vehicle, you might get to try the vehicle, but then you need to purchase the vehicle over the phone or online. But what Ford wants is that the dealership is still there for really a service 
process. So he wants pricing to be transparent and that it's regulated. But how is that going to occur? Well, through a direct sales process, meaning if your dealership doesn't want to play ball, you'll always have the option to go online and get your price online, buy online, and then online will just probably assign you a dealership where you'd go and take delivery. And that's likely what's going to happen. What definitely has happened, and this is number uh, four, new dealer contracts. So new dealer contracts, Ford has gone all the way to splitting up its business. So you now have Ford Blue, the traditional gasoline powered engines with Ford EV. So the EV division, because you know that's it's it's all new, there aren't these pre-existing contracts that allow for markup. Before you get really upset with Ford, I'll let you know for the last several decades, and especially since the internet came along, dealerships have actually often sold very close to cost their new vehicles. It wasn't, you know, it's common knowledge that dealerships made money with their used vehicles and their new department, which had often, let's say 100 to even 500 vehicles in inventory, which they paid interest on, millions of dollars of interest. Well, then because of the internet and the ease of picking up the phone, calling different dealerships or visiting different dealerships, those dealerships would often sell very close to cost. And this didn't affect Ford in any way because Ford would, you know, sell the vehicle with an interest rate basically to the dealership and that dealership would pay interest on the vehicle and when they got it sold, whatever price they sold it at, it didn't affect Ford because Ford had a fixed price that they sold to the dealership. Now dealerships asked for many years to have a fixed price so that the pricing would be fair and consistent across different dealerships and also to protect them so they would have a little bit of money left over because once interest was calculated, they often sold vehicles at a loss. So these contracts are currently in play and these contracts have allowed for negotiation at a dealership and buying a vehicle, a new vehicle at dealership cost or very close to it for years. Now some dealerships see this as a chance, I guess, to get back and make, finally make money. However, the solution is new dealer contracts. You can't just annul an existing contract, but that's for the gasoline powered vehicles. So Ford splitting up the, the EV side, EV vehicles will have their own deal. You could say their own dealerships, but really existing dealerships will have the option to opt in, in which case they'll have to sign contracts that will require them to sell at the intended price. So non-negotiated price, fixed price for the EV. Now when new contracts are due, for the gasoline side, I definitely would see this occurring also for the gasoline side. And you know, I have, I talk with people and I talk to someone who's actually been in the business for must be close to 60 years. And you know, they mentioned that Ford would not like looking at past decades, Ford wouldn't be in the process of asking dealerships to actually upgrade and spend millions on, you know, the whole, sales experience side of things, the sales side dealership spending tons of money to upgrade if the plans were to get rid of these dealerships. So slogans or thumbnails that say no more dealers, that's just not going to be the case at Ford. The new contracts are going to require the gasoline side of things to put money into their sales department. However, I definitely see a transition, you know, Dwayne from Bronco Wild Outdoors covered this really well. He talked about how really what needs to be done, and he wasn't specifically talking about Ford, um, but he has actually specifically talked about Ford, but sales departments need to be all about service. So we're basically gonna be moving and experiencing something completely new once the current contracts are up, and I think the whole buying or negotiating in a dealership, that's not gonna be part of the sales process. What's gonna be part of the sales process is getting great knowledgeable service on the product and the price you get there is gonna be the same price you get on the internet. So if ever they don't try to play ball or be fair, you'll probably just be able to buy it on the internet. Um, but that's what Ford is pushing for. So new dealer contracts happening with the EV, I believe in 2023. And the, for the gasoline side of things, while those contracts are three quarters of the way through, there's a couple of years left. So we'll see changes coming up in the next two or three years. Now, 
The fifth thing Ford is doing is actually pretty interesting. And you might question it, but I'll get into all the details for sure. Okay, so the fifth thing, Ford started talking about this last fall and that's low to no inventory. Even when things get back to normal, instead of having 150 F-150s to choose from on the lot, which the dealership pays a ton of interest for, well, I think it's gonna be a bit of a trade-off. Dealerships won't be able to sell over MSRP, but they also won't have millions of dollars in interest to pay. So for example, instead of 100 or 150 F-150s, there'll be 10. So you'll really get to see the different powertrains, the different trim levels, you know, are you more of a Tremor, FX4, Lariat, XLT, Platinum, King Ranch. You'll get XL, you'll get to see all the trim levels, try out the different powertrain, find out what's perfect for you. So I'll really give a better dealership experience because you're really gonna be focusing on what your needs are, what your wants are, and the sales isn't gonna be so sales, it's gonna be, you could call it pre-purchase service. So this pre-purchase service is gonna be all about making sure you get what you want, what you need, and the price will be fixed. So you don't have to haggle for hours on each different trim because you don't really know what each of them costs until you've negotiated them for an hour. Well, that's, we're not gonna, dealerships won't be wasting your time like that in the future. Ford's plan, low inventory, it's a trade off for the dealership because they'll have a lot less interest to, to pay, but they'll also have fixed pricing. So they'll have less potential money to pay, but they'll also be protected from losing money. So that will be good for everyone and I think it's just gonna be great if the experience at dealerships isn't about haggling and all that messiness. It's gonna be about trying out vehicles and finding out what the perfect vehicle is for you. And I think when Jim Farley talks about dealerships being pivotal in offering um, a very different experience, but a very good experience, that's definitely what is gonna be heading our ways. Now, the sixth thing Ford is doing. Number six, talked about it, it's just fixed pricing. So fair deal for everyone, whether it's your you know, sweet grandmother or grandfather going to buy a vehicle or, you know, a hardened 25 year old buying their first new vehicle. Everyone's going to get the same price. There'll be none of that nastiness in regards to haggling the relationship with your dealership and with your, you know, salesperson will be good because that's they're not going to be trying to just sell you something. They're going to be trying to provide you with an excellent service so you don't just go and buy it online. So I think that's gonna be absolutely awesome. Now, the seventh thing Ford is doing, because I said I want to flush everything out, I don't want a catchy thumbnail and not even talk about the Maverick, so there is Maverick news at the end, but the seventh thing is that dealers cannot play around with the order of where people sit in line waiting for their vehicle for the popular models. So this also helps avoid MSRP. So basically, the Ford Maverick the Bronco, the F-150 Lightning, the Mach-E, and even the Explorer, these are models that a dealership cannot prioritize. That means if you come along and you say, well, I'm willing to pay five or 10,000 over MSRP, but I want my vehicle as soon as possible. Well, they can't just put you at the front of the list and make all the people that followed my 10 steps on not getting robbed who paid the correct internet MSRP price and got the interest rate and the rebates that they were due according to the according to Ford according to Ford's plans and desires well they can't be put at the bottom of the list and constantly get people put ahead of them so that is really good that is a great step Ford is undertaking to make sure people get treated fairly now the eighth thing Ford is doing is that dealers are being asked to put millions into their locations, including the sales departments, and this is likely gonna turn into a pre-purchase service department. So I talked about it earlier, but now I'm just stating it out clearly. Ford's been talking about this since last fall, low inventory, and uh, you know now they're talking about fixed pricing, so it's pretty obvious that the whole sales department is completely being changed. Definitely for the electric, because for the electric, the plan has publicly been put out there that you're going to your dealership to try out a vehicle, to gain knowledge, to really be served, but the price is already dictated in advance. It's what's on the internet. So all great things that Ford is doing. Now, 
the current reality isn't great. I'm willing to be completely frank and open about this. More and more dealers are selling over MSRP. And you know what? If it's inventory, that doesn't bother me so much. But when it's our orders that we wait for, no, we should be absolutely price protected from the time we ordered the vehicle, unless it gets converted to another year. I can understand if the resale value of the vehicle is gonna be a whole lot more and you're getting the newer model, that's a different story. But when we order, we really need to have that price we see. And if it does come in one or two years later as a different model year, well, then I at least expect to get the internet price, not markup. And people have been seeing even their orders get marked up and that's just wrong so huge ford maverick news promised that at the end here it is so i covered this right when i was at the peak of not having my throat because this is the third time i test positive for a, a certain illness uh but here it is I'm going to full out, fill out the news because Tim from Tim Bartz from Long MacArthur got us this, the news actually before dealerships. I'm going to be getting this uh, probably relatively soon, maybe this afternoon I would suspect. But first of all, September 15th is the correct date for ordering a 2023 Ford Maverick and production isn't going to start for the 2023s on the 24th of October, but likely three weeks to about a month later. Now. Some of you are gonna be really upset about this thinking, hey, this means I'm getting, when I order my 2023 Maverick, I'm gonna get it later. Even if they would have started, you know, taking orders for 2023s back in June, Ford needs to build out all the 2022s. It just has to happen uh, if they're on COVP. And what's really great about this news is let's say you had a dealership that did not fill out the COVP process. So you don't have the customer order verification process filled out for you. And you'll know because, you know, either they didn't do all three steps, take a photocopy of your driver's license, get your deposit and have you sign an offer. If they didn't do all that, and then also fourth step on their end, submit it all to Ford. Well, you fall into that category, like I mentioned earlier, where you're just potentially an invented client. So you're almost basically treated like a dealership asking for inventory. Well, with this transfer order conversion date from when the build order, uh, factory's building 2022s, they shut down for two, three days and then start building 2023s. Well, with it being pushed back a month, we're gonna have more 2022 Mavericks get built as 2022s. So less complicated in regards to pricing. Actually in Canada, we had yet to have any news about um, 2022 pricing carrying over to 2023 or news that instead of price protection that we would that clients we would get offers rebates emailed to us so really glad because this means that people that have a complicated build from Ju uh, July and August have a good chance to get built I would suspect that almost all the EcoBoost orders will get built other than a few you know late January lariat luxury package or xlt luxury package those might might still i think they'll still get carried over and definitely some complicated hybrid builds close to the november 15th cutoff so maybe somewhere around october 15th and later some of those will still get carried over but less than before and for people that wanted to order up a 2023 it just changes when you can order it because you weren't getting your bron your maverick or bronco until the 2022s were built, at least those that were ordered correctly. So that's that. That's all the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this, this far, please, in the comments section, put in finisher. I'd love to know in the comments section also what it has been your experience with the dealership, both positive and negative, because I like to get the whole story, because there's a lot of positive stories and there are some horror stories so please drop them in the comment section let me know what you think about this whole direct sales process uh, let me know what you think about what i mentioned about the future of the dealership experience instead of a sales department it's more of a, a service pre-order department what do you think about all that in the meantime i do absolutely wish you more cars and more power and if it's your thing, I do hope you get to put the pedal to the metal. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and take care.